is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My friends, I am excited because we are rolling out a brand new sermon series called Everybody's Got a Story. And we're going to spend the next few weeks sharing our stories as the clergy and some other people within the life of the church so that we can get to know each other a little bit better. We're going to start this with our senior pastor and his wife delivering their story and how God called them into ministry. So you, you can look forward to that during the sermon portion of today's worship. But for now, my friends, will you pray with me? God, we are grateful for today. We are excited to gather wherever we are and worship you so, Father, fill us and the places we are in with your Holy Spirit. Enable us to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus, the resurrected Christ. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me? God, we are grateful that no matter who we are, no matter where we are in our journey of faith, you know us by name and you've counted every hair on our heads. And you love us enough that you already died for us in the person of Jesus the Christ. And you have sent yourself in the form of the Holy Spirit to guide us on our journeys of faith, to shape us and give each of us a story for how you are using us to grow your kingdom. Father, we give you thanks this day that, that Christianity is not a spectator sport. Rather, you put us in to, to, to be your hands and feet, to to roll up our sleeves and get dirty in ministry and, and to, to get to know you better as we serve you more fully in this world. Father, thank you for gifting each of us uniquely and charting a course for our lives so that we can have a story of how you use us. But Father, as we gather in this time of worship, we don't just gather to give thanks to you. We also come with concern. So Father, continue to hear us as we lift to you now the names of the individuals we are holding in prayer this day, either silently on our hearts or aloud on our lips. Lord, we are grateful that you hear our prayers. Continue to hear us as we join with one voice to pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey Buncombe Street, my name is Bridget Walter and we're excited you're here. Our new series is on stories. Everybody's got a story and as believers, our story shapes our faith and our walk with Christ. There's no story that's too insignificant or small to share with others. Our pastors at Buncombe Street will be sharing their own stories with us in this series. Thank you for joining us. 
So I'm Brian, and this is my wife, Jennifer. Uh, we've been in ministry together for 21 years. I grew up um, all over the state of South Carolina. My father's a retired Methodist minister. So I was born in the big city of Greeleyville, and then I lived in Greenville, Easley, Chester, Greer, Spartanburg, Cow Pens, the Pens, I've got the Pens, um, New Ellington, and Lyman, and now Greenville again. So I've been a preacher's kid and been in the Methodist church all my life. So I grew up on the east side of Spartanburg uh, in a little community called Cannes Campground. Uh, it's a, a family community. It's a community where everybody knows your business. Uh, <laughs> your parents know what you've done before you make it back home. But it was a great, a great place to grow up, a great place to be a kid. Um, God's country. God's country, yeah. It's probably a good way <laughs> to explain it. And that's you have how to go they, through there. That's kind of how they explain it. Um, but spent most of my life uh, in Spartanburg County until I went into ministry. Uh, then uh, we did live in Calpins for six years, uh, pastored there for six years. Uh, then we got sent to New Ellington, South Carolina, which if you don't know where that is, we didn't either uh, when we got sent there. Uh, but it's about seven miles outside of Aiken. Uh, it's exactly two miles from the Savannah River plant or the bomb plant uh, main entrance. And so we kind of spent five years there and laughingly tell people that sometimes we glow because of the radiation that we experienced for five years. Yep, we're human nightlights. Uh, and so. Um, spent five years there in Aiken County and then moved back to Lyman, uh, where we served uh, at Lyman United Methodist Church for the last 10 years. And then we've been here at Buncombe Street for two months now. So, uh, We have 18-year-old daughter Bryson, who is a freshman in college at Greenville Tech. Um, she's our only child except for our 10-year-old Golden Retriever, Wilson. Um, and he puts up with a lot from all of us, especially from Bryson. Um, I, my father's still living, Kenneth Bobo. He lives in the Spartanburg area. I have an older brother, Kevin Bobo. He and his family live in Spartanburg. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I'm the oldest of two boys. Uh, my brother, younger brother, uh, he and his family live in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, my folks still live in Spartanburg and uh, Canada's campground. And so we're uh, blessed to be close enough to all of our family to, to get to see them and, and do things with them. And they get to experience uh, our ministry. They'll they'll be in and out of Buncombe Street oh, yeah. uh, throughout, <laughs> throughout the next couple of months as soon as we we get back uh, in in-person worship and activities. They're excited. <laughs> yeah. We met in 1984 when my father became his pastor at Cannon's Campground United Methodist Church. Uh, I think you were 10, 11 at the time. I was just a wee bit older. Um, so we really didn't talk to each other at that time. He likes to tell people I didn't talk to him. And I like to tell him that would have been a felony at that time <laughs> if I'd have been hanging out with a 10 year old. Um, but we got to be really good friends. Um, we hung out with a group of people together for several years after you were in college and seminary. And after my father had moved on to another appointment, I stayed in Spartanburg. Uh, we were really good friends for a long time. We would bust each other's chops all the time, just like we do now. Um, never did we think we'd start dating. We were just good friends. And I think that's probably why we eventually did start it, start to date. Because we were such good friends first, it just seemed natural. And now it doesn't, I don't remember a time when we weren't together. And just for the record, uh, our 21st anniversary was Friday. And so, uh, been married 21 years. Yep, magical Magical years. years. Magical yeah. years. Magical years. I enjoy um, working with plants, working outside. Um, like anything to do with children or animals. Um, like to read, don't do it enough. Uh, like to spend time with Bryson. We like to help do what we can to help the economy of Greenville in Spartanburg and most other surrounding areas. So I, I really enjoy um, sports, uh, watching them on TV. Uh, if I'm honest with you, I'll tell you that my favorite sport, uh, right behind baseball is professional wrestling. Sport. And it's, uh, it is a sport. Mm -hmm. uh, athletes wrestle. Paid actors. Um, so I, I do enjoy watching professional wrestling. Uh, I enjoy fishing. Um, I also enjoy uh, spending time. Uh, one of the things I kind of do as an extension of ministry is that I'm a law enforcement chaplain for Spartanburg County Sheriff's Department. Specifically, I'm the chaplain for the uh, canine division. And so uh, a lot of time uh, when I'm not at the church, I'm doing ride alongs and, and hanging out with that group of, of folks who have really uh, become part of the family over the last four or five years. I never in a million years would imagine growing up that I would become a pastor. Um, that was not in my plan. Uh, it definitely was in God's plan. And, and I can look back now uh, on my life from an early age until now and see how kind of God was preparing. 
Um, told you I grew up in a small community. Uh, church was kind of the central point uh, of our fellowship and our social life. Uh, my brother and I were fortunate enough to grow up in a, in a, in a family of believers and uh, we were very active in the church. Uh, I, I tell people jokingly, uh, I, I don't really remember a time not being part of a church. Uh, and, and that church that I grew up in really shaped and molded me into who I am. Um, throughout my childhood and even specifically in high school, um, there were times where I would be in leadership roles in the church and, and I didn't feel comfortable doing that, uh, but, but the church people really had confidence that, that I should be doing that. Uh, again, preparing me for what was to come. Um, I had a, an experience happen to me um, right before my senior year in high school. Uh, there was a group of us who had played sports together. Uh, some of us were uh, about to be seniors, others had already graduated, and, and a couple of guys who had graduated that I was really close with, uh, right before uh, my senior year, their freshman year in college, they had an automobile accident. Actually, it was uh, 29 years last month. And so I can remember that day because I got the phone call that, that my friends, uh, actually, uh, one of their names is Brian. Uh, the other Brian was in a car wreck. And I remember how that felt. I remember going to the hospital, not knowing if he's going to make it or not. Uh, I specifically remember, remember having a conversation with God uh, on a stairwell uh, deep in the bowels of Spartanburg Regional Hospital. And I remember talking to God in a very different way than I probably ever talked to him before. Uh, I, I was a person of faith that grown up in the church, but uh, that was the first time I was really angry at God and, and was questioning things. Uh, you know, as teenagers, you think you've got the world figured out. Uh, and here it is, everything's crumbling around me. Uh, and, and here's my friend is kind of hanging on for life. And, and so I remember having that conversation with God and, and asking why and why are you letting this happen? And uh, the, the rest of that story is Brian, uh, he, he did, make it he survived he, he is partially paralyzed he's in a wheelchair but uh he drives he's married uh he was in our wedding he was in our wedding uh, so it, it, his story is kind of my story our story uh and he really that that bad event uh, god took something that was really really bad and, and did something good with it and it really affected a lot of a lot of us in that community and so i, I at that point decided after going through different physical therapy sessions with him that yeah, that's what i need to be doing so I went to school to be a physical therapist, or at least I thought I was going for that. Uh, then I went on a Saukatu mission trip the summer after freshman year in college, and God began to speak, uh, and I began to, to kind of listen. Uh, I, I didn't really like what he had to say because uh, I really felt him pulling me into pastoral ministry. Uh, the people around me started kind of telling me that's what you need to be doing, you know, and I was like, I don't like talking in front of people. Some days I don't even like people. So how can I be a pastor? Uh, there was a verse that kind of uh, scripture that came out uh, during the, the whole time of the accident uh, that we all kind of leaned on. It was uh, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who, who gives me strength. And that, that I guess that's kind of been the, the passage that's kind of driven us uh, through life and ministry is that, uh, yeah, I can't do all this by myself. I have to lean on Christ, lean on God. And, and uh, there are not, it's not a Sunday that goes by that I don't remember that verse. Because until even to this day, I, I don't like talking in front of people. Uh, I don't like being around people sometimes. Uh, but uh, I know that this is where I'm supposed to be. Uh, I don't know what else I would do. Uh, ministry for us is not just me in ministry. Uh, it's a, I, I call it a tag team sport. Um, sometimes ministry is full contact sport. Uh, it's, it's, it's tough at times. And, and over the last 21 years, we've had a lot of good times. We've had some tough times. but. Uh, we've been in it together, and uh, I, I couldn't do it by myself. And so uh, I definitely know God had a plan uh, for me, for Jennifer, for Bryson. Uh, Bryson is kind of, uh, she was born into this. She didn't really pick it, but she's kind of, God Same. has even prepared prepared her for this. And, and she's, uh, yeah, she's done well as, as a PK. Yeah, she's got those instinctual PK genes. So during college and, and seminary, I was fortunate enough to work at St. James United Methodist Church as a youth pastor and leisure ministries. Um, Jennifer was also on staff then uh, as children's minister. And we were just friends, and we were just no friends. dating. Um, and so we were there four years. Uh, and then uh, I finished seminary during that time and was appointed to uh, be the pastor of 
the Cowpens Charge, which is Salem United Methodist Church in downtown Cowpens, and St. Andrews United Methodist Church in Clifton, number, number two, two uh, Mill Village, and you have to be specific about that. Uh, and so we were there six years. Uh, Bryson was born there. Bryson was born there. Uh, it was only about five, ten minutes from, from where I grew up and from where Jennifer had spent uh, her her adulthood as right. her pastor, uh, as her dad was our pastor there. So it was almost like staying at home. Uh, we knew a lot of people there. Uh, it was very familiar. It was a good six year of ministry. Uh, then we went to New Ellington for five years and that was a great, uh, great appointment for us. Uh, we knew after five years it was time to move on. So we asked to, to move and uh, we're blessed enough to come back home to Lyman and uh, blessed to spend 10 years there uh, and get Bryson all the way through high school. There. Right, third grade through yeah. high school graduation. I'm a social worker. I worked for 31 years for the Department of Social Services, primarily with children that were in foster care. Um, most of those children had emotional disturbances of some kind. I retired from that in April of this year, and then in the next three days, I started working at Epworth Children's Home in their foster care office, which is here in the upstate. We're expanding all over the state of South Carolina. And now I'm a recruiter for foster parents here in the upstate. Um, we've got two already that are foster parents. One of them is a member here at Buckham Street, um, and we've got about 20 more that are in the process of getting licensed. So um, I stopped one part of my social work field and then started in another one. We're excited to be at Buncombe Street because it's a whole new world. Um, many, many years ago, I went to kindergarten here at Buncombe Street, so some of that feels like I'm coming home, but we're excited to be here. We're even more excited that we're going to be able to get back in church and see people face to face and not just in driveways and via Zoom. I, I'm excited because I think uh, it's a good time to be in ministry. It's a, it's a, a weird time in the world right now uh, with the coronavirus and, 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 and us not being in church for the last six months. Um, but I think there's a lot of opportunity there, uh, a lot of opportunity for maybe doing some new things, some different things, maybe streamlining some things. Uh, when I think of Buncombe Street, I mean, there's just all kinds of possibility. Uh, and we've got a great, great staff team, uh, and, I, and I'm looking forward to, to working with them more, great pastors. Uh, I, I hear we've got a great church. I've only met a handful of people in the last two months, but uh, I'm really excited about October the 11th opening back up and really getting to see the church. Uh, not the building, the church, but the church, the people. So I remember uh, growing up in the, in the community I, I grew up in, there was a conversation I had, and, and growing up, softball was really a big thing. And so we would all spend a lot of hours on the softball field. And I was, I was talking to this guy who was a little bit older than me. And uh, we were talking about all the experiences that, that people in the community had had. And I remember it probably around 17 years old, he said something that stuck with me. He said, everybody's got a story. He said, you're not special. He said, your story is good. It's your story. He said, but we all have stories. Um, and that's kind of been my motto. Uh, I'll ask people sometimes, just like, what's your story? And, and I don't mean it to be sarcastic or anything. I, that's, I mean, we all have stories. That's my favorite question. How'd you get here? <laughs> yeah, how'd you get here? Um, and so I, I hope that our story today is kind of sparking inside of you, maybe uh, to, to get to thinking about your story. Um, uh, I'm excited that this is just another chapter uh, in our story here at Buncombe Street. So I'm, I'm excited about how our story is gonna, gonna move forward uh, in, in the coming months and years. Uh, excited to see what God's gonna do uh, and how he's gonna be part of that story. Thank you for joining us. I hope these stories have resonated with you in some way. Over the next few weeks, consider your own story and how you might share it with the world. Thank you.
I'm sure you're as grateful as I am to both Brian and Jennifer for sharing their story. And, and we look forward to the weeks to come where we hear even more stories about how God is using us to do the ministry of Jesus Christ. But before we say farewell for now, I've got a few announcements I want to bring to your attention. Uh, I want to make sure you know that both Angela Galbraith, who is our current communications director, and Hannah uh, Sewell, who works in our nursery, are both making provisions to depart from Buncombe Street. So we pray God's blessing on them in their future endeavors. We also want to remind you that next Sunday is... Uh, Epworth's work day offering. And this harkens back to when all United Methodists in the state of South Carolina were challenged to give one day's wage or whatever you earn in one day to the children of Epworth Children's Home. So you can submit your offering either online uh, or you can mail a check in and just put in the memo line Epworth Children's Home. And last but not least, uh, as you know, even though the church doors are temporarily closed, many of the operating activities of the church remain. These include our apportionments to the conference, our facilities costs, our staff, and other ministry expenses. We know that the pandemic has presented many with hardships, but as you are able, we encourage you to visit the link below and make an offering to God to help in our service to him. But for now, my friends, receive this closing blessing. May God's grace be with you, watching over you, protecting you, and keeping you safe. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen and amen. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind blow at your back. May the sun shine. May the rain fall.